Today's video is part two of our look at this mini ITX board based on a VSC3 CPU running at one gigahertz. Uh, and today we're going to look at the built-in video uh, based on an S3 chip. Uh, so let's take a look at that. We review Alright, so this video is mostly just going to be benchmarks and looking at games running. We, we went over the motherboard and the case and, and everything else in general in the last video, part one. If you haven't watched part one, I definitely recommend you go back and watch part one. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, something messed up with the video drivers when I initially set this thing up and I couldn't get the onboard video to work correctly. So uh, I installed a pretty powerful uh, PCI video card and uh, you know did the video with that PCI video card in there. Um, now I guess technically this should have been the first video uh, since it's looking at the built-in uh, video rather than upgrading with a, a PCI video card but um, and, you know things happen <laughs> so these things get switched around so we're going to do this video now and we're just gonna kind of take a look at the built-in video. Um, the only other thing I did is is the hard drive got a little bit of a downgrade. Actually, um, I put in a whole new hard drive and uh, reinstalled Windows and all the drivers and everything. Didn't really have any issues. Um, but now we're running a 80 gigabyte uh, Max Tor drive. It's an ATA133 drive, but I think that's like the Diamond Max 8 series or something. They're not very good or reliable hard drives, but I figured it's working, so I may as well put it in here and uh, you know use it while I can. And then here we can see the Unichrome uh, drivers and display manager. I don't know why it's coming up and saying there's a second monitor there. Um, there's not a second output unless it's talking about that RCA jack which I, I thought was just audio. Um, I don't know. I don't know why it insists there's a like a second monitor hooked up. Uh, but anyways um, so yeah, the drivers are very similar just to like S3. They're very similar to what you would find installing like a an S3, like a Savage 4 card or something like that. So not too uh, too exotic, but yeah, definitely uh, S3. So I've got to do a direct shoot of the screen here because whenever I run Power Strip, the capture software just goes black. Um, it will it it captures fine all the way up until window loads Power Strip, and then it just blacks out. So um, this is just the uh, performance profile of the you know onboard uh, via uh, S3G Unichrome and uh, we've got engine clock of 133 I'm guessing. It's just running up at the uh, front side bus speed maybe of the motherboard. Then we have memory clock of 266. So yeah I just wanted to show you guys that uh, really quick and then I'm probably going to have to just mess around with this or uninstall it so I can uh, capture some some game footage from this thing. And just some more info on the built-in video uh, chip here. Uh, if I did mention it before, it is running off the AGP uh, bus. It looks like it's at a four times transfer rate. Uh, we've got an APG aperture of 120 megabytes. It looks like it's uh, got like 32 uh, megabytes of memory there. So uh, now let's check out some games, see how they compare to the uh, 6200 uh, with the 256 megabytes of memory uh, that we had in here earlier. And we'll start off uh, like we did in part one with 3D Mark 99. And as you see, we're having the same weirdness as we had before when we had the uh, uh, GeForce uh, 6200 installed, um, just zero FPS. Although, it, you know, I don't see any graphical glitches. Uh, everything going on looks nice and smooth. The one thing I definitely did notice, though, is there's a lot more time in between some of the tests, um, like going into the uh, Game 2 test. It takes a quite a long time to um, load up the, the test, whereas uh, before we had the PCI card, the G46 installed, uh, it was a lot zippier, um, although when it does come up, uh, you can also tell it, it doesn't seem to be running quite as fast 
um, but still not bad. Uh, everything looks good, sharp image, uh, but then again, if you look up in the corner, uh, weirdness going on with the FPS counter. Obviously, it is not running at less than one FPS. Um, it would be less than a slideshow, it would just be a picture, and actually, as we can see, it's actually running quite okay. And we actually score a little bit better this time, actually, than we did with the G4-6. Uh, only by two uh, 3D marks. We had 25 with the G4-6, and I think we had 42 CPU marks uh, when we had the G4-6 installed. And here we have 3D Mark 2000, and it seems to be running okay. Um, to my memory and eyes, it seems like it's slightly slower than when we had the G4-6 installed, but it's not it's not doing too bad for, you know, a system with, like, built-in video. Uh, the image looks good. It looked really good on my CRT monitor. Uh, no glitches or any weirdness like that. It didn't freeze up. It did what it was supposed to do quite um, adequately. Now, 3D Mark 2000 is one is when we can first really see a difference here between our built-in uh, video from S3 and the PCI G4-6 uh, card we had in earlier. Um, with the PCI card, I remember we were on this first test here, uh, we were definitely getting, you know, a lot of at the time over 30 FPS. We're here a lot of time it's under 10. Um, uh, some of that probably has to do with uh, the apparent lack of uh, TNL features on the uh, built-in video. Um, so that might have a lot to do with it uh, since it seems this card uh, lacks TNL, which I forget what that stands for. I want to say it's texture and lighting in, in hardware, but I, I don't think that's it's what it means. It seems like it should be, but I don't think that's what it means. Um, but anyways, on the G4-6 card we had in earlier, uh, that was all done in hardware, and I believe with this built-in uh, Unichrome graphics, it's done in software, if it's done at all. So that seems to make a big difference, you know, going into that 2001 and beyond era. Now I didn't want to focus much on DOS because I really think this machine is really meant to be at least a Windows uh, you know, 9X machine. I really feel it excels there but being it's an S3 uh, built-in video from S3 it should be real compatible with DOS so I wanted to see how it did uh, with a couple tests. And Doom it did really well, didn't have any problems. I think the FPS averaged around like 118 FPS so not bad at all there. Quake unfortunately had this weird effect and you can see it right here with the video. It, it didn't matter what resolution I put it in, it just did this. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, there's probably some kind of workaround around it, but I don't even know what was causing it. But uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a hiccup there. And, um, yeah, and let's see the FPS here. I don't even think the FPS was too great. And then we have speed sys here, and it gave us a score of like 675, 676, which actually I think it, it's hard to tell sometimes with the little with the CPU uh, markers there, but it looks like that does put us around the range of a um, what Pentium 3 600, a little bit less than a Pentium 3 600, which. Yeah, it's, that's about where I figured. I, I think I said in part one, it, I heard it was about a 600 megahertz Celeron. So, um, you know, I, I don't know how precise in, in, in you know, SpeedSys is, but that, that seems kind of about right, um, what it's telling us there. All right, so now back to Windows. Um, so I did do some of these uh, benchmarks at 1024 by 768 like we did with the G4-6, and performance just wasn't great. So I toned it back a little, so these benchmarks from now on, they're going to be at 800 by 600. Um, so here's Quake 2 at 800 by 600, and I think in the end we got a little over 30 FPS, which wasn't bad. Um, with Just for comparison with the G4-6, uh, the 6200 installed via PCI. I think we we're getting about 52 FPS, and that was at 1024 by 768. But so you know, not quite as good. But I mean, obviously that's a much more powerful card. Uh, so you know, no surprises there. But you know, that's not bad for this built-in video um, from Via. I mean, it's a little above 30 FPS. Not bad in my book. Now looking at Quake 3 at 800 by 600 high texture details, uh, didn't do too bad. We got about mm, 24, 25 uh, FPS, so not not terrible uh, with the built-in benchmark. But now uh, let's look at this game with some uh, actual gameplay.
and I wanted to check Final Fantasy 7 here again like we did with the last time to see if it passed all its tests and it does not uh, I guess with the well first of all we're missing one of the options here whereas the G46 had all of the options for display resolution um, but this the built-in video from Via also fails the 8-bit uh, palletized textures uh, just like the G46 so no real advantage there um, the game though played just fine I didn't really see uh, any issues from the little bit of uh, time I played the game uh, with these uh, with this built-in video This game gave us about 16 FPS on average. Now, on attempting to run the Comanche 4 benchmark, we got the same uh, no MMX detected error we got last time, but we also have a no hardware TNL uh, transform and lighting uh, detected, uh, which the built in uh, video from VIA does not support. So we could not run the Comanche 4 uh, benchmark. So uh, to replace it, uh, we'll run the Forsaken benchmark. Um, so it's a little interesting little benchmark. I've never actually run it before, um, but I like how it gives you a bunch of options if you're using different accelerators, and then there's just a generic one which we're using here. So we'll see how well this game uh, looks and performs. I have to say it looked really good, and uh, it seemed like it gave us pretty adequate performance. Uh, at the end, uh, if you go back in, it, I think it gives you an average FPS, and we are getting, it's like 29 point something, so about uh, 30 FPS. So seems like it played just fine on this setup. So what do I think of this machine now with the built-in uh, video? You know, it, it it's fairly adequate in my opinion. You can't run it at the high resolutions like you could when we were running the uh, GeForce uh, 6200. Uh, you just can't. Um, so we had to moderate our resolution settings. Uh, most of the games ran adequately at 800 by 600. You know, things like Quake 3, I really wouldn't recommend playing with, with the build. It was, Quake 3 was already kind of iffy with the, um, 
<laughs> you know, with the higher end uh, G4 6 uh, video card in there. But I don't know. I, I don't know if I would recommend it for with the built in video. Um, but this thing is fine. Like, I, I haven't run XP on this, but I think as the board is, just like businessy stuff, um, you know, early XP games that don't really require a lot of power, it might be okay with. But I think the, overall, as a Windows 98 machine, it does okay. Um, as is, um, it, and even better with the, with the video card. Now, DOS, I I don't think this machine really excels at DOS, mostly because of the lack of an ISA slot. So you're going to run into to sound issues. You can put in, a, you know, there's some fairly compatible PCI sound cards. You could probably mess with that, but I just don't think this machine really excels at DOS. Um, we saw some weird things with Quake. I'm not sure what was going on. Uh, there with Quake. I, I really haven't investigated. It could be something simple or not, uh, but I think this thing really does do well uh, as a Windows 98 kind of retro machine. Now, as I said in part one, would I seek this thing out specifically? Unless you're really into low power usage setups? No, I, I don't really see, I still don't see a reason to specifically seek this motherboard out and or this kind of build out, but Yes, you can use it as a retro uh, Windows 98 machine, and I, in my opinion, it works fairly well. It's quite serviceable. Not optimal, but serviceable. Um, so, yeah, I think it was an interesting look at this machine. Um, I, I mean, I guess if I was going to do anything else, I could go more in-depth with it, how it runs in DOS, or I could go the other way and kind of see how it does uh, with XP and early XP games, but... You know, I don't, I don't know if that necessarily interests me, uh, so I'm probably just going to leave this uh, as is at this point. But it was interesting to look at this machine. It did exceed my expectations. I, I really did think it would be just horrible at everything, <laughs> except maybe like business tasks. But, you know, it, it's not bad, even as is with the built-in sound and video. For Windows 98, it's, it's not terrible. So, I hope you enjoyed these two videos. And uh, if you have any comments, you know, make sure you put them in the comments. Tell us what you think, uh, suggestions and experiences of your own. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.